minutes away from the official race time as we start to meet our athletes from the inside. These names scrolling across the screen for you there. The African champion and record holder is Antonia Alcana of South Africa. His African record stands at 13.11. And Omar McLeod, the defending IAAF World and Olympic champion for Jamaica in lane nine. Our first look then here in Doha at the men's high hurdles. Oh, well, they go, McLeod got out very well in lane nine. Also, Trykovic got out well as well. McLeod at this stage, Constantino in the centre, and also going well is Alcano of South Africa. But it's McLeod on the near side who's going to come through and take this from Alcano. Trykovic probably just nicking second, in fact, on the line. 13.18, the winning time for Omar McLeod, ahead of those coming in Alcana and Trykovic close for second. The first four as we see them out the blocks, and McLeod got a, a much better start than Para Conquer alongside him, that's for sure. Yeah, he led the way straight from the good, and he was the first to rise at that hurdle. I did actually notice that there was hurdles going left, right and centre there. Let's wrap that result up then, 13.17, uh, Omar McLeod, Trykovic a season's best, 13.37, Alcana and Allen complete the automatic four. Drawn in the lane next to Jason Joseph, European junior champ a few years ago, then Shabenkov. Looks cool and calm, doesn't he? Has a full collection of world medals in this event. Bronze in Moscow, gold in Beijing, silver in London. Wen Jun Ji, twice an Asian Games winner. Anybody who's watched that event, even if you're not part of that continent, they are massive games with huge pressure. The fact that he's won it twice means that he can cope when he's in the spotlight. Watch for Ji of China in eight. Two inside him, the big, tall Shebenkov and Brathwaite off the back of that fabulous win in Lima for the Pan Am title. There he is. <laughs> Clean start. Can I got away well and Shebenkov's under a little bit of pressure. Now the authorised neutral athlete beginning to come. A few men clattering the barriers. Xi of China getting back into the mix. Shebenkov from Xi and a good run from Jason Joseph of Switzerland to come through for third. Well, there were all sorts of barriers being clattered. I can see around about a dozen on the floor. So it wasn't a tidy race from everybody. Shabenkov was put under immediate pressure by Kanai of Japan, but he responded really well and showed all his, all his experience. Great run from G there of China also. It was the first time we saw the block cam again since last night. And look at this image now as all of the men negotiate that first hurdle well it was G out in lane 7 there from Japan he got a great start it took Shabento until hurdle 4 to come through he looks like he's just actually chopping his stride a little bit there that's definitely a sign of more to come for when he needs it great start by the man from Japan in lane 7 G came back into the race and by the way, Joseph, who's finished third, has set a new national record for Switzerland. Excellent run from him. Sergei Shabenkov moves through to the semi-finals. The champion from four years ago looks in good shape. Here's Daniel Roberts, the US champion. He beat Grant Holloway in the US champs, but lost to him in the NCAA's collegiate championships. Pascal Martino Lagarde, back to some sort of form after uh, not as strong the last couple of years, but he won the European Championships in Berlin last year. And the World Indoor Champion, Andrew Pozzi, benefiting from the fantastic Great Britain support here. Based in Italy, of course, these days. So. Well, that's the first full start we've seen for quite some time. And Certainly, Jeffrey Julius, I don't think, needs to be told that uh, he was the one who peaked too early and, and for, through the first hurdle, face into his hands. Jeffrey Julius, I'm afraid, the athlete from Haiti. Rules are rules, and they are there for a reason. It was about as blatant a false start as you could see, but you really don't want to see anybody's dream coming to an end before they've had a chance to finish a race. So. 
no trouble on this occasion. Roberts was out well. Posse got away pretty well as well, but it's the tighter figure of Daniel Roberts at the moment. Posse out in lane nine and Martino Lagarde coming through now. But Roberts easing his way through, just clattered that hurdle and clattered that one and nearly went down. Just about managed to hold it together. A messy end to the race for Daniel Roberts, but he got the job done. 13.39. Let's hope he's not done himself any damage in the process. And that all very nearly came to pieces for Daniel Roberts. But he did the job, he got over the line, albeit with one or two missed heartbeats, I'm sure, towards the end. Martino Lagarde and Pozzi and Riley in the top four. So we were missing a few at the start, weren't we? But it was a great start from Daniel Roberts. He was away, he was over the first five hurdles. And he's still going well at this stage. We're looking at Martin Lagarde there just coming through and that's the one he clattered it was a ninth hurdle that sent his center of gravity not in the place he'd want it going into the tenth but he got there Roberts the winner 1338 Martino Lagarde 1345 ahead of the Andrews Posse and Riley Shunya Takayama Asian Games bronze medalist 1325 this season that kind of time would take him through here is a very, very special talent, 21 years of age. He turned down an NFL contract to focus on athletics, the fastest man in the world this year. That's Bennett of Jamaica, he goes in five, but watch for Holloway. Second from the left-hand side from the USA. Holloway's got away well, this is a good run from the American at the moment. Takayana trying to get in the mix. And now you are at Q8, running very well. Holloway takes it from Takayama. 13.23. That was very, very impressive. He had a good dry phase. He was so quick to that second hurdle. And he almost has to chop his stride. Such a tall athlete, of course. Very, very rangy. And then he just drives all the way to the line doesn't ease off like some of the other athletes have that we've seen so far and from hurdle one to two was so impressive for me he just covers the ground so so quickly he arrives at that next hurdle so much sooner than the other athletes and just really having to chop back his stride he's not striding out to his full capacity there 13.22 seconds Plenty more where that came from, you suspect, from Grant Holloway, the only man this year to have run inside 13 seconds. Takayama was excellent value for his second-place finish. Duvalidis a season's best, and Al Yuha took the fourth automatic spot. Bennett is one of the non-automatic qualifiers at the moment. Chen, the Asian bronze medalist from Chinese Taipei. Then Ronald Levy, the Commonwealth champion from Jamaica, a best of 13-2-2 this season. And the Olympic silver medalist from Rio 2016 is right on the outside. It seems to have been a, a magnet for some of the big guns in this first round. Orlando Ortega of Spain, three times a winner this summer on the Diamond League circuit. Go, Levy got out well in lane seven for Jamaica. Ortega now into his running as well. It's Ortega from Levy and also Chen going well for Taipei. But Ortega from lane nine comes through comfortably. 13.16. Impressive stuff from Orlando Ortega. The fastest of the heats. He goes through and is pretty pleased with himself. The Spaniard takes it. He got a great start, didn't he? He had a good reaction. You can see that he's really, really driving. The first step has to be a short step. It has to allow you to get that momentum. But he looked good from the first hurdle and he was pulling away the longer the race went on. 13.15 seconds. Ortega took it, 13.15, the sixth fastest time of the world this year from Levy, Chen of Taipei and Bolosian of France.